Hey guys, welcome back to Splash Attack. So I'm finally back from vacation and today I'm gonna be opening up a Counter Surge Challenger deck and showing you guys what's inside. And as you can see, I already have cards that are gonna be suggested to be added into it to upgrade it and make it more competitive. And interesting, interestingly enough, I did this a bit later. I didn't do it upon release. So since it's later, the benefits from this is that I'm gonna have Dominaria cards added into it. like. Llanowar Elves and Woodland Cemetery, which I like a lot better than the Fastland Blooming Marsh. I personally always favor Checklands over Fastlands, so that's just my thing. But if you like Blooming Marsh, go for it. But you know, after rotation, you're only gonna have access to Woodland Cemetery, so might as well get used to it now. Um, yeah, I've already pre opened this a bit, so it just slides out, and then I can easily just go right into it and show you guys what comes in it so oh cool a green a green 20 sided dice came in it usually it's a random color this time it matched the the deck color so that's really cool all right so as always we get a little divider quick reference of course and then we get this little introduction to the deck i believe i'll open it up and show you guys okay it's not an introduction to the deck it's just a general introduction. I thought it would say something about the Challenger deck, but all good. All right, so here's our sideboard. Let's look at that in a bit. Oh, yes, a walking ballista. Oh, my gosh. Um, I just checked, and this thing is up to, like, 22 bucks. Came out of nowhere. Everybody's using it now. Amazing card. Very versatile, very good. Big threat. Helps you get rid of a lot of things. So... Very good card, right out of the pack. First one on top, everybody wants this. So what you do is you sleeve it up. You gotta sleeve it up. Let me make sure it's in good condition. It's in pretty good condition for the most part because you know, Wizards isn't the best at printing and quality, card quality control. So we got that. It's the first card in the deck, all right. So, we have a Walking Ballista, we have four of these Glint Sleeves, sleeves Siphoners, we have two Scrap Heat Scroungers, we have three Rishgard Pima Renegade, we have Dream Stealers, interesting, Gaunti Lord of Luxury, we have Verderous Gearhawks, we have Hour of Glory, we have Long Tusk Club, Winding Constrictors, Vital Part of the Deck, Blossoming Defenses as a 4 of, very good. Walk the Plank, interesting. Up oh, there goes our glorious Fatal Push. We have 4 Aether Hubs. We have Foul Orchard, which is terrible. Uh, Hepshep Oasis is very nice. Swamps. And then we have Forests in here. But that's the deck. That's the main board. Of course, we're going to be taking a bunch of stuff out and adding a bunch of stuff in to make it more competitive. But, you know, Fatal Push and Walking Ballista are definitely the highlights of this deck. What I think they could have done a little better was not putting so many Foul Orchards in or not putting them in at, in at all. And giving us, like, you know, a Blooming Marsh or two and stuff like that. Or even a Botanical Sanctum. Um, wait, Botanical Sanctum is, like, post-GP, so they would have never anticipated people using Hadana's Climb. So, uh, so, what's the word I'm looking for? So effectively, right? So, this is what we have in the deck so far. Let's take a look at the sideboard, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about when I say improve the deck. Alright, so, let's open up the sideboard quickly. I'm not too impressed with this sideboard, honestly. I don't think I'm going to be using it much. It comes with, like, one or two cool cards, but aside from that, oh, look at the card. Print it with a... But a white dot that's not removable. That's nice of them. What card is it? Oh, Slice of Twain. Doesn't matter. Dispossess. Ooh. Life crafts, Crafter's Bestiary. This is one of the best cards that come in the sideboard. Dispossess. Die Young. Cartouche of Ambition is pretty cool. Acts like removal. And you get plus one, plus one life link, which is really nice. Duress is great for those controlling situations. Um... Destroy target artifact or enchantment, you gain two life. I mean, I rather use Thrashing Brontodon. Oh, sorry, is it focused? No. 
Yeah, I'd rather use Thrashing Brontodon over this because it's 3-4, it's a huge body, and it's instant speed as well. So, um, I would consider some of these in the sideboard, for sure. And some Cartouches and Duress in there. So, let's see. Cartouches. And we have our Duress, we have these. So, we have 1, 2, 10. 10 sideboard cards so far for consideration. We'll put that there. And then... We have so many options when it comes to the when it, when it comes to a deck like this. So for sure, right off the bat, four fatal pushes and four Raskus content. Now I know a lot of you might be saying that's way too much removal, but maybe, maybe it is, maybe it's not, depending on the deck that you play against. If it's creature heavy, these are very useful. Fatal pushes, I would say, are always a four of their one drop gets rid of those early game cards, and even late game. You, you can destroy something with a, with Revolt, you could destroy something with a converted mana of four of less, which is just ridiculous. Um, Raskus Contempt, we have a lot of Teferis, we have a lot of Chandra's, we have a lot of Planeswalkers that are threats walking around. So definitely, in, for me, I would, you know, have four of these and at least two Raskus in the main board and then two in the side. But let's just say these are four of, uh, four of each, right? And then, uh, I don't have four... Ooh, wrapper, let me move that out of the way. So I don't have four walking ballistas at the moment, but I would definitely recommend these two and two more on top of that because they are just so versatile, very useful, and just... It puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. Even if they re remove you, they kill you or whatever, you can block with it and then shoot. You could shoot with it if they try to remove. It's just, it's so versatile. Um, yeah, you can block and shoot, so you could block a creature and you kill another one. And there are so many, like, even if it's just shooting for one, there are so many, so many crazy threats that are one drop in the meta right now. So, you have, like, Jade Light, you have Glint Sleeve, you have, what else, Earthshaker Kenras, Brent Merfolk Branch Walkers, and just, just to name a few, but we have a lot. We have a lot of those threat, one drop threat, I mean, not one drop, uh, one toughness threats that Walking Ballista can get rid of right away. All right, so that's that. And then, also within the deck, we will definitely, definitely have four Jade Light Rangers. Now, this is getting really expensive, right? Because, like, you know, this is, like, $44. This is this $28. Um, Raskas are, like, 15 each, so this is $60. And then here, Jade Light has been going up to, like, 11 12 So you have, let's just say, like, $44, $45 here. And, yeah, it's a pretty... It's a pretty intense upgrade. And then um since there's so much control and removal and targeting stuff in the meta, Carnage Tyrant is definitely a very, very good cyborg card to just keep your opponents in check, even if they're trying to remove you and stuff. Carnage Tyrant is very hard to answer and it forces them to do something. And if they don't, I mean it's pretty much game pretty fast because it's it's a freaking seven six trample. I mean it's nuts. Uh, Llanowar Elves is a very interesting addition to this deck because it taps green mana. It's a one drop. Your first turn, your first turn move, very valuable. Speeds you up, and uh, there's not much else to say. I mean, it's just a great card to add into the deck. Now, another thing that we've all seen in uh, the Memphis GP, the second place deck played uh, with Soul Tide Energy, right? So I don't have a fourth one yet, but four of these Servants of the Conduits, and then we'll be playing four of these Bristling Hydras, which is really, really good as well. And then Hadana's Climb, the combo. You know, at the beginning of your combat, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control, then if that creature has three or more plus one, plus one counters on it, transform Hadana's Climb, and then you see four a one color list, a green and a blue. Target creature you control gains flying and gets plus X plus X, where X is its power. So it's a this is a very, very strong finisher. And one of the biggest reasons why we are splashing blue. And with blue, we could do either like, you know, four of these, but two of these should be good. And then we'll also have an island. We have Field of Ruin, which you can uh, use to mana fix for yourself a blue island onto the field. Since we're not going to be playing um, a lot of islands because we're just splashing it for Hadana's Climb. So that's another way to get to it. You have your dual lands. We use forests and swamps in this deck, so this can work. Um, instead of Blooming Marsh, we're going to be using... 
sometimes for willing cemeteries. And then Thrashing Brontodons with the release of Dominaria. Enchantments are definitely a thing. And even artifacts, though, are a huge, huge problem because, like, you know, walking ballistas, opposing walking ballistas, not your own. Um, what else? Walking ballistas, and then we just have got, still see some remnants of God's Pharaoh's gift. We have Karn out now that's, like, all about artifacts. We have Traxos decks. Just really, really good, versatile, big body for three drop, two green, and one colorless. Yes. So... What are we going to take out of this deck? Alright, so this does not have synergy with this deck. Scrap Heat Scrounger is good, but definitely taken out. This is not a very good card to be playing in this deck. I mean, it's very interesting. It makes your opponent discard. And I guess, like, eternalizing it would be pretty crazy. Um, it has Menace, but at the end of the day, it's a 1-2 for a 3 drop, which is very expensive and risky. Uh... I guess people want to put a bunch of counters on this to attack and then have, like, make your opponent discard a bunch, but I just don't think it's effective. Gonti, again, very nice card, maybe sideboard, but I don't know how it works with this deck. It just doesn't seem like it fits, so I'm going to be moving Gonti out of here as well. Verter's Gearhawks, I might even add a fourth one. Um, Hour of Glory, Exile, Target Creature, if the creature was God, blah, 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 blah. Um... Yeah, for f we we had this is more of a budget Vras Vraska's contempt, so um we're gonna move that out because Vraska will take the place. Long Tusk Club, pretty cool card. Winding Constrictor, definitely a four of. Blossoming Defense, definitely a four of. We have Fatal Pushes and Vraska's contempt. This is definitely a removal we don't need. Aether Hubs, cool. Maybe not this many. We'll be taking this out as well. Hypeshot Oasis, and then, you know, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 swamps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 forest, right? So, yeah, that's what I would take out of the deck. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you guys would take out, because, yeah, I mean, some of these cards are pretty awesome, like Gaunti, um, Gaunti, yeah. And Scrap Heat's Crowner is just an amazing, resilient card. But I don't think they belong in this deck. This deck is it's one of the challenger decks that has the least synergy in terms of card makeup. But when upgraded, and it's hella expensive to upgrade. But when upgraded, it's very nice. And, you know, Hadana's Climb, Bristling Hydra, Server Nut Conduit. You guys, if you haven't seen it, check out the Memphis GP. And you'll see, like, it's just such a powerful play. If your opponent's not prepared or have answers, the game can be over really, really fast. So, you know, Field of Ruin, Scavenger Grounds for those Scarab God decks or just God Pharaoh's Gift or any deck or so many decks that are just so heavily graveyard reliant. You know, even Rekindling Phoenixes. We also have, uh, well, not ski the immortal or whatever because that thing can be summoned from anywhere but uh yeah scavenger grounds is always good in a deck mm. lanor elves carnage tyrant but the bread and butter of this deck is right here walking ballista walking ballista fatal push fatal push fatal push fatal push raskas 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 contempt and jade light rangers are very important as well oh gosh Gotta clean up that sleeve. But yeah, this was my take on how to improve the challenger deck. And if you guys have any other suggestions or see any other combos or things that work really well, let me know in the comment section below. But feel free to go back and revisit the video and just check out like what comes in the deck. Let me know like, hey, why did you take that out? I would definitely leave that in there because it's very useful. So you shouldn't have taken that out. And I'll definitely take your consideration, I mean, your suggestions into consideration. And you know, we'll all just share information, grow together and improve as we go, right guys? But thank you guys so much for watching. And also remember, I did, um a what's inside and how to improve it video for the Hazard Aggro deck and also the Second Sun Control deck. So be sure to go check those out and let me know your expert opinions and suggestions on it so that we can grow with those, those decks as well. And next up, I'm going to be doing Vehicle Rush. So be on the lookout for that. And thank you guys so much for your support. But I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye, guys.